Hey, fourth graders, it's Mr. Ollie from the FSAI Center. I hope you're doing well. It is time for another First Chapter Friday. I hope you've been enjoying the books. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I see the ratings. If you've got some ideas for things you'd like me to try, make sure you let me know in those surveys that you fill out afterwards. Abinaya, I see you. I know you want cookbooks. I'll see if I can find an exciting cookbook to read for First Chapter Friday. All right, so today's book is part of a series and the main character is a dog. Some of you guys have probably read some of these books. We'll see. This is uh, pretty new, and it's the latest in the series. Chapter 1, A Robin Egg, Blue Sky Morning. Risha Scott held a box of muffins and stared up at the Twin Towers. She loved visiting her mom's office at the World Trade Center. It was fun to walk through the busy, crowded plaza with its fountain and sculpture and bright flowers. Risha loved the buzz of thousands of people all going to work in the Twin Towers. Today, she and her best friend Max got to spend the whole day there. They had to visit a professional workplace as part of their fifth grade career project. Max's dad worked downtown too, but his office didn't allow visitors. I call that chocolate chip muffin, Max said as they walked into the lobby with Risha's mom. They waited to sign in at the security desk. Then they take the elevators up to the 91st floor of the North Tower, where Risha's mother worked. Risha yawned. You're not tired already, are you? Her mom asked, laughing. You got me up so early, Risha said as they waited for the elevator. But I'm not complaining. Today is going to be amazing. Risha had on her navy blue dress with mom's pretty pink and purple scarf tied at her neck. Mom wore the bright purple dress Risha loved with her cool red framed glasses and black shoes with little bows on top. Last night, Risha and Mom had even painted their fingernails the same color, a sparkly pale pink. Max was dressed up too, wearing his dad's favorite red tie. It was perfect September weather, with a robin's egg blue sky. On their way to the office, Max and Risha had gone with Mom to vote in the primary election for New York City's mayor. They'd walked another three blocks to pick up muffins for everyone in the office at the fancy bakery Risha loved. Now, Risha and Max will get to help Mom at work all day. You know what's going to be amazing? Max tapped a poster on the wall. It was about the Paul Taylor Dance Company's performance in the World Trade Center's outdoor plaza that night. After work, they planned to buy picnic food and stay to watch the show. Risha and Max had taken ballet lessons together when they were younger. Max was still dancing, but Risha had switched to gymnastics in fourth grade. That'll be you someday, Risha said, pointing to the men on the poster. She gave Max a fist bump. Here we go, Mrs. Scott said as the elevator doors opened. She worked on such a high floor that it took two elevators to get there. When they stepped off the second one, Risha led them down the hall to the office. Mom's company worked with big transport ships to make sure they were following rules and being safe. To be honest, Risha didn't really want to do that kind of work when she got older. She was more interested in being a gymnast and an art teacher. But missing school to spend a whole day downtown with Mom was too great a chance to pass up. They shared the muffins, and there were a few left over. Mrs. Scott looked at her watch. I'm going to take a muffin down to my friend at Port Authority. You can hang out in the conference room, and I'll be right back. She brought Risha and Max to a big room at least three times the size of Risha's bedroom. It had a long table with fancy, cushy chairs that spun around. Best of all was the wall of windows that looked out toward the Empire State Building. Whoa, said Max. Risha smiled. She'd seen the view before and was excited to share it. She pulled her colored pencils and sketchbook out of her backpack. Later, she'd need to take notes for their career project, but for now, she wanted to draw the buildings outside. I'll be back in a few minutes. Then I'll introduce you to some people you can interview for your project, Mom said, and closed the conference room door behind her. This rocks, Max said. He polished off his muffin in three bites and pulled Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire from his bag. Risha looked up from her drawing and laughed. Haven't you already read that like three times? Gets better every time, he said. Risha went back to work on her drawing. A few minutes later, she heard a sound like an airplane. It got louder and louder. She looked out the window. A plane was flying low in the sky. Too low. Risha stared as it roared past the Empire State Building. It was heading straight towards them. We're going to do a second chapter for you. How about that? Because that was kind of quick. Chapter 2, Playground Practice. Come on up, Ranger, Sadie called from the top of the slide at the park. You can do it. 
Ranger jumped onto the slide. He climbed slowly up to meet Sadie, spreading his toes so his paws wouldn't slip. When he made it to the top, Sadie gave him a hug. Good job, she said. Then they slid down together. Walking up steep slopes was something Ranger had learned in a special training with Luke and Dad. Ranger had been practicing to be a search and rescue dog so he could find missing people and rescue those who needed help. Ranger had practiced following Luke's scent to find him when he was hiding in the woods. He'd practiced walking over all kinds of surfaces, including slippery slides like this one. But when it came time to take his test to be an official search and rescue dog, Ranger hadn't passed. It was all because of the squirrel. In order to be a search and rescue dog, you had to ignore everything except the commands. You had to ignore juicy hot dog pieces and squeaky toys on the lawn. You also had to ignore squirrels. Even squirrels with big swishy tails. Even if they ran right past while you were taking your test. That's what happened to Ranger on the day of his test. He chased the squirrel up a tree instead of ignoring it. Ranger knew that Luke wasn't really missing or in trouble on the day of the test. If a real person had needed help, Ranger would have helped. But Luke was just pretending, so Ranger chased the squirrel instead. You sure are good at obstacles, like that slide, Ranger. Luke said, scratching Ranger's neck. Too bad you didn't pass your test, but you're still the best dog in the world. He turned to Sadie. We should go home. Dad's making chili. Ranger walked home alongside Luke and Sadie. When they went into the kitchen to wash up for dinner, he got a drink of water from his dish in the mudroom. Just as he was finishing, he heard a humming sound coming from his dog bed. Ranger walked over to his bed. He pawed at his blanket until he uncovered the old first aid kit he'd dug up from Mom's garden one day. The humming was coming from the old metal box with the leather strap, and it was getting louder. Ranger knew what that sound meant. The first aid kit only hummed when someone far away needed his help. Twice the old metal box had taken Ranger into war zones where young men were struggling to survive. Once it had taken him to help two girls trapped in a trembling city full of fire and smoke. Once it had taken him to a flooded neighborhood where people had to climb onto their roofs to keep from drowning. And now the box was humming again. Ranger nuzzled the first aid kit strap over his head. The humming got louder and louder. The first aid kit grew warm at Ranger's throat. Light began to spill from the cracks. It glowed brighter and brighter. Soon it was so bright, Ranger had to close his eyes. He felt as if he were being squeezed through a hole in the sky. The humming stopped. Then a roar filled Ranger's ears. When he opened his eyes, he was standing in a room with a long table and big cushy chairs. Next to the table was a tall window. Ranger looked out just in time to see a huge jet tip its wings. It was enormous and close, too close. Ranger barked and a thundering crash shook the room as the plane slammed into the building above him. Okay, so that is the first two chapters of Ranger in Time, Escape from the Twin Towers by Kate Messner. This is a good series. If you've read some before, great. You're going to love this one. If not, you can really jump into the series at any time. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And we will talk to you again soon. Thanks for hanging out with me. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.